हेलो स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर आशुतोष राय फ्रॉम आई सी आर इंडियन इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ वेजिटेबल रिसर्च टूडे वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक ऑन इन दिस मॉड्यूल ऑन सेंगस डी ऑक्सी चेन टर्मिनेशन मेथड बाई यूज ऑफ एम थर्टीन बेस्ड सिंगल स्टैंडर्ड डी एन ए वैक्टर्स टू साइकिल सिक्वेंसिंग अंडर पेपर जेनेटिक इंजीनियरिंग एंड रिकॉमेंडेड डी एन ए टेक्नोलॉजी आफ्टर कंप्लीटिंग दिस मॉड्यूल you should be able to understand about history of dna sequencing sanger's d di deoxy method of dna sequencing use of m13 vectors for sequencing and various advanced techniques of next generation sequencing as we all know that the biological functions are performed by various types of proteins found in different cells or tissues of an organism these proteins are translated products of rna different rna species are transcribed from a number of genes in an orchestrated manner it means that the expression of every protein depends on the information encoded in form of genes in every aspect of life genes play an important role and are conserved in form of genome present in the nucleus this makes very clear that if we have to know the genetic information or genes then we have to sequence the genes and there are several methods are available for sequencing genome discuss about various techniques for genome sequencing or dna sequencing the basic information required for any cellular process is contained in the genetic material which is made up of long strand of dna or deoxyribonucleic acids the order of bases in polynucleotide strand determines the function of gene products therefore it is important to know the sequence of a gene or genome sequencing of dna fragments that resulted in the chemical identification of genes and genome nowadays DNA sequencing has become an integral part of molecular biology and genetic engineering experiments determining the order or arrangement of nucleotides in a DNA fragment is termed as DNA sequencing now the question arises that why do we sequence DNA or RNA fragment DNA sequencing enables us to determine uh, determine the exact nucleotide sequence of a dna fragment this technique has a very important implication in molecular biology as knowledge of dna sequence has numerous applications such as determination of regulatory region and coding regions of a gene mutation analysis splice variants homologous sequences search of susceptible and resistant genes and many more applications the history of nucleic acid sequencing dates back in 1960s it all started with the sequencing of ribonucleic acid rna the rna sequencing method was completely dependent on enzymes the overlapping rna fragments were obtained after treatment with endonuclease digestion the digested fragments were subjected to exonuclease activity to yield individual nucleotides from one end the resulting nucleotides were identified by thin layer chromatography or tlc in 1963 robert hole successfully sequenced the alanin trna of the yeast the total number of bases deduced was only 77 but this took a very long time with continuous hard work by maxim and gilbert at harvard university usa and frederick sanger at cambridge university uk proved the paved the way for the development of modern dna sequencing methods in the same year in 1977 types of dna sequencing in uh, if we talk about types of dna sequencing basically there are two methods 
these two methods have been developed independently. First was Maxim and Gilbert uh, method. They invented a DNA sequencing by chemical cleavage method. And second, the Sanger dye deoxy chain termination method for sequencing. The chemical degradation method of DNA sequencing involves a base specific cleavage of DNA strands while the dye deoxy chain termination method works on enzymatic termination of the growing strands. In dye deoxy chain termination method, we can be carried out under mild conditions using enzymes and it does not involve hazardous chemicals whereas the chemical degradation method involves toxic chemicals. In maximum Gilbert chemical degradation method of DNA sequencing, the maximum Gilbert reaction involves two steps. Two step, uh, uh, one is catalytic reaction to degrade the template DNA and this method, the template DNA is treated with dimethyl sulfate and hydrogen to modify the purines and pyrimidines respectively. The piperidine is used to catalyze the phosphodiester bond cleavage where the base has been displaced. The DNA fragment to be sequenced is labeled with 5' end. In chemical treatment, it generates breaks at a small proportion of 1 or 2 of the four nucleotide bases in each four reaction. These reactions include G, A plus G, C and C plus T. Formic acid depurinates the template DNA and causes breaks as A plus G. The guanines are methylated by dimethyl sulfate in G reaction. The uh, pyrimidines C plus T are hydrolyzed by hydrogen. The addition of sodium chloride to hydrogen protects thymine for C only reaction. The modified DNA is cleared by hot piperidine at the position of modified base. The concentration of modifying in chemicals is controlled by introducing one average on average one modification per DNA molecule. Thus a series of labeled fragments are generated. From the lab, uh, radio labeled end to the first cut site, each molecule are form an array. The reaction is loaded on polyacrylamide gels and the fragments are resolved by electrophoresis. Sanger dye deoxy chain termination method. This method requires DNA synthesis in presence of dideoxynucleotides or DDNTPs along with regular deoxyribonucleotides that is DNTPs. Dideoxyribonucleotides contain a hydrogen group at the 3' prime con carbon instead of a hydroxyl group that present in nucleotides, normal nucleotides. When a dideoxynucleotide is incorporated, it stalls the elongation as there is no free 3' prime OH group. For the next incoming nucleotide, the individual reactions are set up for 4 nucleotides. The fragments of different lengths are created due to insertion of dideoxynucleotides. These fragments are visualized on a gel and the length of each fragment indicates the position of particular nucleotide in the template sequence. In the present figure of deoxynucleotide triphosphate that is DNTP, you can see at 3' prime carbon the OH group is present. In any DNA, deoxynucleotide has an OH group at its 3' carbon position. The phosphate group is attached to this 3' prime carbon have OH group and chain elongates. While in dideoxynucleotide triphosphate, the 3' prime carbon have only H group. DNA polymerase adds DNTPs to 3 OH group 
Hence, when it encounters a dideoxynucleotide, it is unable to elongate. In Sanger's method, dideoxynucleotides are randomly incorporated, forming fragments of template DNA. Four reactions are set up using deoxynucleotides and one of the dideoxynucleotides. The dideoxynucleotides are randomly integrated and the elongation is stopped. After the PCR is over, each reaction yields fragments of different lengths. They are run on acclimate gel and visualized. After visualization, each fragment shows the position of particular nucleotide in the original template and it frames the whole length of template DNA. Here you can see in diagram, the template DNA is denatured and annealed to a primer. The primer is usually radio labeled to be able to visualize the fragment on a gel. For each reaction, all DNTPs and a specific dideoxynucleotides, DDNTPs for adenosine triphosphate and all other three are added. Thus, four reaction tubes are set for each template denoting ATGC. DNA polymerase is added and a regular PCR reaction is performed. During the course of reaction, dideoxynucleotides are randomly incorporated along with deoxynucleotides. The different size fragments are synthesized. Each fragment, each reaction tube denotes the position of the particular nucleotide in template. There has been a lot of advances in this technique. Currently, only one reaction is set up for each template and individual dideoxy DNTPs are fluorescently labeled. Thus, four fluorochrome are used in same tube. After the PCR is done, the reaction is run on a capillary gel and passed through a laser coupled with a detector, that is CCD detector. As each fragment passes through the gel according to their molecular size, the laser excites and the fluorescent attached to the terminal deoxy DNTPs and the light is emitted. This emitted light is detected by a detector and a peak is generated. So, a chromatogram is created that tells the position of nucleotides. By this method, the automation has been done and very easily hundreds of DNA fragments are sequenced in a single plate. Due to the introduction of capillary electrophoresis, the speed of sequencing has been dramatically increased. In capillary electrophoresis, small capacity tubes of approximately 25 to 50 microgram filled with a sieving matrix are used for electrophoresis. Electrophoresis can be carried out using high field strength and due to its heat, due to very less generation of heat, it is very convenient. The gel image of automated sequencer is usually chromatogram. By using computer software, each peak is converted into a particular base. This step is known as base calling. So, in this electrophorogram, you can see different colors. These are pseudo colors which are generated, which are assigned by computer program for sequencing. The advanced DNA sequencing has been greatly enhanced by fluorescent dye label terminator, cycle sequencing, capillary electrophoresis, and fluorescent imaging by CCD cameras. Cycle sequencing. The sequencing reactions that are used for automated sequencing are combination of PCR and regular sequencing. As in automated sequencing, a mixture of double standard DNA template, primer, and deoxynucleotides are added. In addition, a fluorescently labeled Dideoxynucleotides are mixed in the reaction tube. A heat resistant DNA polymerase 
such as tag DNA polymerase is used for DNA polymerization. The reaction are uh, cycled through three different temp uh, temperatures to generate labeled fragments. Just as in PCR, the first step involves a denaturation of DNA template at high de temperature, approximately 90 degrees centigrade. In the second step, is the annealing of primer at the lower temperature of 50 to 60 degrees centigrade. Then finally, the increased temperature to optimize the tag polymerization activity that is 70 to 72 degrees centigrade. These three steps are repeated over and over in order to generate large number of label fragment for automated sequencing. As before, each of these fragments varies by size in single base increment due to random incorporation of dideoxynucleotides. The final sequencing product are separated by size and recorded for fluorescent dye. In next generation sequencing methods, next generation sequencing or massive parallel sequencing refers to a non-Sanger based high throughput DNA sequencing technology. In this method, millions of or we can say billions of DNA strands are sequenced in parallel, yielding more uh, throughputs and minimizing the need for the fragment cloning method that was used in earlier cloning techniques, uh, earlier sequencing techniques often used in Sanger sequence of Sanger sequencing of genome. The major step in next generation sequencing involves generation of fragment libraries from isolated cDNAs or uh, D uh, genomic DNA. Then these fragments are ligated to 3' prime and 5' prime oligo sequences known as adapters. The sequences uh, now these sequestered to be or chip depending on the sequencing platform. Millions of fragments are uh, sequenced in parallel and short reads are generated. The information is matched with reference libraries and analyzed by sophisticated bioinformatics programs after alignment. Since cloning of DNA fragments are not involved in this process, cloning bias of genome can be avoided. The method has greatly reduced the time and cost involved in sequencing. This has given rise to personal genome medicines and there are several NGS platforms are available. The capillary based sequencing instrument developed by applied biosystems were used by NIH led and Celera led human genome projects. The first human genome sequence published jointly in science and nature in 2001 required about 15 years to complete and to close to 3 billion dollars. The next generation sequencing concept revolutionized the sequencing so much that presently 45 human genomes can be sequenced in a day and the cost has been reduced up to 1000 dollar per genome. You can compare it with the old genome project and new next generation sequencing technologies. By these next generation sequencing, the time and cost has been greatly reduced. 454 sequencing technology. In this method, the pyrophosphate molecule released during nucleotide incorporation by DNA polymerase is used for downstream reaction which produce light from the cleavage of oxyluciferin by luciferase. These have three steps. First is library preparation, loading of DNA library to beads and emulsion PCR, and third is sequencing. In first library preparation, the double standard DNA is fragmented to small pieces of about 400 to 600 base pairs in size. The DNA fragments are linked with to adapter and then separated to single strands. 
Thus, the DNA library consists of randomly fragmented single standard template attached to oligonucleotide adapters. In loading of DNA library to beads and emulsion PCR, the DNA fragments are attached to agarose beads via the adapters and these are used for emulsion PCR. Emulsion PCR uses vigorously mixed oil and aqueous mixture containing PCR reactants where isolated individual agarose beads containing a single unique DNA fragment is amplified. In sequencing, the amplified DNA hybridized to beads is loaded on a tighter plate for sequencing. These tighter plates contain small wells. Each well can load one bead. The plate is loaded to the instrument and the fluid system flows through the plate, providing A, C, G and T nucleotides sequentially. When these nucleotides are incorporated onto the DNA strands, a chemilucent reaction takes place, producing light. The chemilucent reaction captured by CCD camera and intensity is proportional to the number of nucleotide incorporated. The millions of sequence data are generated are aligned against the source reference data. This has advantage of speeding of time and deep sequencing. ABI solid sequencing. This was developed in 2007 and works on the principle of genomic library reconstruction and ligation followed by sequencing. It uses DNA ligase for sequencing rather than DNA polymerase because ligation is necessary in this step. The genome is to be sequenced is randomly fragmented and then ligated to adapter molecules. The adapter attached molecules are then attached to agarose beads. The bead capture DNA molecules are amplified using oil immersion PCR. The amplified beads capture DNA is anchored to a glass slide and fluted with fluorescent labeled nucleotides. If there is uh, complementarity between the template and oligonucleotides which were labeled it is ligated and then two bases are detected at a time. Then the oligonucleotide is cleaved, means when it is de detected then it is cleaved, cleaved and the next round of ligation commences. Each time two nucleotides are detected. Then the read length of this technique is 25 to 32 approximately 40 million beads can be sequenced. The sequencing output of this method is 2 to 4 gigabases. Since each base is identified twice and the accuracy of method is high. Illumina sequencing technology. Illumina was used sequencing by synthesis technique. Hence the polymerase extends the template and the fluorescently labeled DNTPs is added to it. The nucleotide is identified during each cycle by a specific fluorophore excitation. In this method, millions of stands are sequenced at the same time. It provides accurate, high yielding sort reads that are compared to reference libraries. The steps are involved are first library preparation, cluster generation, and sequencing followed by alignment. In library preparation, the cDNA or DNA samples are fragmented randomly and are ligated to a specific adapter at both 3' and 5' ends. These fragments are amplified by PCR and purified. In cluster generation, the library is loaded onto a flow cell. The flow cell contains a lawn of oligos that are complementary to the adapters present in the library. Each fragment is amplified to clonal cluster. This is used for sequencing. In sequencing, Illumina uh, sequencing by synthesis uses reversible termination based sequencing where every base is 
be recognized after being incorporated. All the four terminated bond nucleotides are present in each cycle. This results in a base by base sequencing. Now, the data analysis takes place. In data analysis, the sequence reads are matched to reference genome after alignment and various analysis are done. Why the DNA sequencing uh, M13 vectors are preferred? M13 based vectors can be used to make single standard DNA suitable for sequencing. Whenever a new gene is cloned or a novel genetic construct is made, it is usual practice to sequence all or part of the recombinant molecule. The Sanger method of DNA sequencing requires single standard DNA as the starting material. Originally, originally the single standard DNA is obtained by cloning the sequence of interest into a M13 based vector or M13 vector. DNA purified from uh, these plasmids can be used directly for sequencing. The bacteriophage M13 phage is a filamentous phage that infects E. coli via F. pilus. The, its genome is a single standard DNA of size approx 6.4 kilobase, surrounded by a proteinaceous coat that is called capsid. The DNA strand present in phage is called the uh, DNA strand present in phage is called F plus strand. After entering into host E. coli, it converts into double standard DNA molecule called as replicative form. By uh, the double standard formation is uh, done by utilizing bacterial machinery. M13 phase as cloning vector can be obtained in both single standard as well as double standard form. In this vector, the replication form double standard vector are modified and replicated inside E. coli host, similar to that of plasmid vectors. A single standard vector can be isolated by collecting those M13 phases. In M13 bacteriophage, the DNA is replicated by a rolling circle mechanism. In this mechanism, one strand is nicked at 3 prime OH and extended by DNA polymerase. The 3 prime end on the circle is extended while the growing point rolls around the circle template, while the 5 prime end is displaced and forms a tail of single standard DNA. Now, the, this single standard tail is converted into double standard DNA by synthesis involving RNA primers. M13 vectors have a, a specific mechanism of RNA DNA replication. The rolling circle DNA replication is initiated by an initiator protein encoded by bacteriophage DNA, which nicks one strand of the double standard circular DNA molecule at a site called double strand origin or DSO. The initiator protein remains bound to the 5' phosphate end of the nick strand. The 3' hydroxyl end is released to serve as primer for DNA synthesis by DNA polymerase third. Using the unnicked strand as a template, the replication proceeds around the circular DNA molecule, displacing the nicked strand at single standard DNA. Displacement of the strand is carried out by host encoded helicase in the presence of replication initiation proteins. Continued DNA sequencing synthesis can produce multiple single standard linear copies of the original DNA in a continuous head to tail series called concatamers. These linear copies can be converted into double standard circular molecule through following processes. First, the initiated protein makes another net to terminate synthesis of the first leading strand. RNA polymerase and DNA polymerase 3 then replicate the single standard origin or SSO DNA to make another double standard circle. 
The DNA polymerase first removes the primer, replacing it with DNA, and DNA ligase joins the ends to make another molecule of double standard circular DNA. So, in this module, we learn about history of DNA sequencing, different sequencing methods like Maxim Gilbert chemical degradation method of DNA sequencing, Sanger's dideoxy chain termination method of DNA sequencing, and various steps in chain termination methods. We learn about next generation sequencing methods and M13 based sequencing. Thank you.